Okay, we probably all spend a bit too long staring at our smartphones every day, especially those of us who mess with these devices for a living. And whether or not we're strictly speaking addicted to our phones, the fact is most of us probably could be doing more to disconnect in a healthy way. That's the idea behind digital well-being, which is part of the new Android 9 Pie. Well, sort of. Digital well-being is in beta right now for Google's Pixel phones, and when it launches it'll be coming to Android 1 and other devices as well. It's not quite clear whether that means that all phones getting Android Pie will also get digital well-being. We'll just have to wait and see there. However, what we can talk about today is digital well-being on the Pixel phones. This is a separate app on the Play Store once you have access to it, but once installed it then shows up as an item in the settings menu, so it's kind of a plug-in feature. Being in the Play Store of course also means Google can update it across all devices without having to roll out any new firmware. When you open it up, the first thing you see is your dashboard. It gives you your overall usage time for today along with a pie chart breakdown of your most used apps, as well as total number of unlocks and notifications. For a lot of people including me, just being able to see this information is fascinating. This Pixel 2 isn't my main device right now so the data for me isn't quite complete, but still just having this overview is extremely valuable. The notifications thing is particularly eye-opening because notifications can completely derail whatever you're doing, yet we don't always think about how often that's happening. As such, there's a big shortcut button down here to show you your most recent interruptions, then it's easy to knock off apps that you don't want bugging you. Tap an app in the pie chart to see its details, or the screen time in the middle to load up a list of all your apps. When you tap an app, you can get a breakdown of your stats in a few different ways, by screen time, notifications received, or times opened, and then you can arrange this daily or hourly. There's also yet another link down below to make it easy to trim down some of those notifications. In apps like YouTube that support it, you can also view in-app statistics. YouTube will eventually be updated with digital well-being features like we saw at Google I.O. Right now it's just a placeholder link into your video history. So here's the biggest, most powerful feature of the whole shebang, app timers. This lets you set daily limits on how much you can use each app. When your daily time's up, the app gets paused, which basically stops you using it until the timer resets the next day. It also means that any notifications from the app won't arrive during that time. Paused apps have their icons greyed out as you see here, and if you try and start them you'll get this little message. Hit learn more and you can see your stats from that app. Of course this means it's really easy to increase your app timer or disable it altogether at any time. You're still fully in control and with a few taps you can get back into mainline in Twitter or whatever. There's a debate to be had here about how easy it needs to be to deliberately sidestep the limits that you yourself have placed on your app usage, but I think what's currently there is a good balance. It first lets you see the information on your current usage, then requires a few more steps to re-enable a paused app. Wind down is the last major feature of digital well-being, and it's one that ties into a couple of existing Android features. You can set your start and end time, and when that begins, your phone screen turns black and white to make it less stimulating in late night use. If you combine it with Android's nightlight feature, which turns the screen an orangey red hue to avoid eye strain, it makes the whole interface look a bit like an aged sepia tinted newspaper. It also works with Android's new Do Not Disturb mode, which can now hide notifications entirely during off hours for even fewer disruptions. Put all of these features together and Google hopes it'll be easier to understand your screen and app usage, selectively cut down if you want to, while still staying connected to what's important, and escape work or other obligations when you're off the clock. This is just the beginning of Google's digital wellbeing initiative, and the debate on how much screen time is healthy is sure to wage on. In the meantime, if you've got a Pixel phone, this beta is definitely worth a look. That's it for now, check out our Android 9 Pie review for more on the latest version of Android, and subscribe so you don't miss our Galaxy Note 9 coverage and other upcoming goodness. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.